so um, previously we discussed um, just simple linear regressions uh, in the simplest form it is uh, bivariate regression um, let me recall what we discussed so far the varied regression like H and uh, some language score, for example. And uh, we have a model uh, that language score uh, is linear function like beta naught plus beta h uh, times h. And uh, we can interpret uh, this uh, beta h uh, parameter as beta h is uh, how fast uh, language score improves uh, each year. Uh, and uh, this is bivariate regression when we have only uh, one, uh, this is called this is called independent variable. And uh, this is called dependent variable. Uh, this is because in our model, uh, this variable is a function of, of this variable. So they are called uh, independent and dependent uh, correspondingly. Uh, actually, in some cases, um, uh, it is rather natural to say that uh, this variable is dependent and this is independent, but uh, sometimes it is uh, much less natural. And uh, this is uh, our choice. Uh, this is our choice, uh, which is which. Is which. Uh, so uh, this is this is bivariate regression, and uh, then we discussed more complex case, uh, multivariate regression. And in multivariate regression, uh, we have something more complex for example uh, we can uh, add another variable uh, for example we have okay it is difficult to draw pictures uh, like like before uh, but we can assume that we have data uh, like language score age and we can also add new variable, for example, um, how much uh, a particular person read every day uh, or study language every day. And um, for example, here is how studying. Uh, daily. And we can expect to see something like something like this, some data like this. And we can consider uh, some model like language score uh, depends on age. and uh, depends on uh, study hours.
So uh, we can expect uh, that uh, both variables h and uh, this variable that measures intensity of uh, how much how much a person study language uh, that both variables uh, have positive effect on language score on average. Uh, so we can expect that both both coefficients here are positive. For example. Uh, so this uh, this is uh, this is what we discussed so far. Um, uh, should I, I remind something more? Do you have any questions about this part? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so uh, uh, another uh, another thing that uh, I want to recall is that uh, the values uh, actually we have well uh, we have the following uh, we have the following idea uh, when we introduce this model uh, we believe that in reality this model is is realized we believe that there is really linear relationship between these variables. Of course, it is uh, some approximation. Of course, we understand that uh, in reality, there are no linear relationship, no exact linear relationship, but it is uh, a good first approximation. It is simple, it is easily interpretable, and uh, so mm, it is a good first, first step. And uh, then when we just when we just say that, uh, okay, we believe that language score uh, depends linearly on age and uh, study intensity, uh, and we don't know uh, these coefficients. We get these coefficients from the data, but uh, as uh, it usually works, uh, if we get something from the data, we have to take into account that uh, data is something that is random that we can obtain different data in the same experiments if we try to replicate it. For example, we, we, we uh, have different group of uh, children and in this group of children, we will have different, different numbers. And uh, when we extract uh, these numbers, uh, these coefficients uh, from, from this data, uh, we understand that uh, these values will be different. And so, um, to some extent, uh, the estimates uh, that we get from the data are just, um, they are just something random and uh, we can treat them as a good approximation or not so good approximation to uh, the real values of uh, these coefficients. Uh, and due to this fact, uh, interpretation of uh, these values uh, should be uh, uh, made with, uh, with some precautions. Uh, particularly, if uh, some particular coefficient, for example, is positive, uh, and you want to interpret it um, as, uh, uh, as an argument uh, that uh, the corresponding dependency is indeed positive. So when, for example, this variable increases, then this variable increases as well. Uh, then you have to be sure that in different replication of the same experiment, uh, these variables, uh, th this coefficient will not become negative. Uh, how it is possible? Uh, assume that, uh, so, Uh, coefficients uh, that we have uh, from the data are uh, estimates of the true coefficients. Uh, that we don't know.
And um, for example, uh, the first uh, the first thing that we are interested in uh, is that a particular coefficient is non-zero, because uh, for example, if this coefficient is zero, uh, then it means uh, that this variable does not affect uh, the dependent variable at all. So if we if we believe that this variable that this coefficient is zero, then uh, this term simply doesn't exist. Uh, uh, so uh, first thing that we are interested in uh, is the following. Can we conclude uh, that a particular uh, true coefficient uh, is non zero. Uh, for example, let me uh, let me assume that uh, I have some data. Assume that I have this data. And uh, with this data, uh, I pick, uh, so uh, I have my um, uh, best fit line. Let me use some theoretical uh, letters here. And I fit, uh, I fit a line that corresponds to this data. So this line, for example. And let me think that I replicate this experiment and I get uh, different data points. But uh, if I get different data points, uh, they can lie somewhere near uh, near my data points in the first experiment, uh, probably. Uh, it is it is quite likely uh, uh, it is quite quite unlikely to see a completely different picture in the data. Uh, but it is possible that I have some other points, for example, for example, these points. And uh, I can get uh, a bit different uh, line in my replication study. For example, this line. Uh, this is initial study. And this is replication study. Uh, let me assume that I have a model like y equals to beta naught plus beta one times x. Uh, and so in these two studies, uh, I will get two different number, two different uh, sets of coefficients um, in the initial study. Uh, I get estimates. Uh, for beta naught and beta one. Uh, for example, I get estimate for beta naught to be equal to two and estimate for beta one to be equal to O dot seven. And in the replication study, Okay, can, we, uh, can you say me uh, what are estimates uh, for uh, beta naught and beta one uh, in the replication study? Uh, just uh, which number uh, would you like to put here and here? So if we think that initial study corresponds to this line and replication study corresponds to this line, what can you say about, for example, beta one? Uh, where it will be larger, here or here? In the replication study? Uh, in the replication study, it will be larger. Um, much more larger or a little bit larger? Um, not so much. Not so, not so much large. Yeah. Uh, how do you see it uh, from uh, from the picture? Um, 
I suppose it um, can be seen from the slope of the line. Exactly, yeah. Uh, we see that this line is just slightly larger than, than this line. Sli the slope of this, uh, of, of this new line is slightly, slightly larger than the slope of this line. So let us put something here like O.9. Uh, and what about beta naught? Minus one? Yeah, something like minus one. Correct. Uh, so, uh, in this example, I just show that if you do replication of your study, you can get different, uh, different coefficients. And what is important is that if you have enough data, like here, uh, then, uh, of course, you will get a different, uh, you can expect that uh, in replicating study, you will get different values uh, of beta 1 but uh, they are, will be close to each other and they all will be positive. Just because we can get slightly different lines here, but all these lines have positive slope. And this is important uh, because it uh, allows us to interpret uh, the sign of this, uh, of this beta one. Uh, it allows us to say that uh, as X increases, uh, Y also increases. Not, not only in our particular data, but we can say that this is some law uh, that we discover it. That uh, this can be applicable not only to our particular data, but to the process uh, from which we uh, collected this data. And uh, in this case, uh, we, we, we see uh, that, so when we, when we do the corresponding uh, analysis uh, in statistical terms, uh, it means that uh, we test uh, the following hypothesis. Uh, so, uh, can we decide? Uh, that actual uh, unknown uh, value of uh, beta one uh, is non-zero. Uh, basically, you have to test uh, the following hypothesis. It is uh, quite likely a, a one sample t-test. You have to test uh, that beta one, uh, we have to test no hypothesis that uh, beta one is zero, and you have an alternative that uh, beta one is not zero. So we ha have to test it. And then we obtain P value. And if this, uh, and if this P value is less than uh, the significance level, uh, we say that uh, we say beta one is significant. So if you get uh, some coefficient that is not significant, uh, then uh, it means that you cannot interpret the value of this coefficient because you can distinguish the value of this coefficient from zero. Uh, if some coefficient is non-zero, uh, is non-significant, is not significant, uh, then you cannot interpret Uh, its value. So basically it means that you cannot uh, distinguish it, uh, you cannot decide uh, that uh, the true coefficient is non-zero. Uh, for example, 
uh, let me consider the following example. Let me assume that uh, I have only two points and uh, these points are uh, located like this. This is my data. And um, of course I can, uh, I can consider the corresponding best fit line. In this case, it will be perfect fit line. And uh, I can obtain some coefficient, some slope of this line. But what can you say if I replicate this study? Uh, uh, what, what, can you say, uh, what can you say from this? By the way, if I have only two points uh, what can you say about uh, the correlation coefficient between x and y? It's one. Uh, yeah, uh, because it is a perfect fit. Uh, it is a perfect fit in our data. Uh, if you have only two points, Uh, we have perfect fit. And uh, correlation coefficient is one. Uh, but uh, what if we uh, make this experiment again? What can we expect? Uh, if we make a replication study. Uh, we see that in our experiment, uh, the larger value of X corresponds to larger value of Y. But note that even if uh, there is no any, uh, there is no any relation between X and Y, uh, we would get uh, this kind of data just because uh, the actual value of Y is somewhat random and uh, we will not get perfect horizontal line in any case, just because some of randomness. And it means that even if uh, the actual law uh, just says that Y does not depend on X, in any case, we will get either this kind of picture uh, or uh, this kind of picture, something like this. And uh, in both of cases, uh, we have some perfect fit, but uh, in this case, we have perfect fit with positive correlation. And in this case, we have perfect fit with negative correlation. And if we have only two data points, we don't have information to be sure that uh, our real coefficient that we, don't, that we don't see, that it is positive because even if it is uh, zero, and then it is possible to get this picture just because of some randomness in our data. Is it clear what I'm saying now? Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, so, in this case, uh, coefficient is non-significant. Uh, can change sign in replication study. So uh, this is uh, this is why we are interested in this significant stuff. And actually, our uh, reports as uh, this uh, significance uh, uh, and p-values, and it draws some stars uh, and so on. So I just want to stress uh, that you have to uh, you have to uh, take into account this significance, and you can interpret your coefficients. Uh, only in a uh, case when they are significant. Otherwise, uh, you just cannot, you cannot reject new hypothesis that uh, the real coefficient is zero, even despite the fact that you obtain some 
other estimates, some non-zero estimate uh, from the data. Uh, and then uh, let us continue. And uh, today I want to discuss uh, different kind of variables, uh, particularly categorical variables in linear regressions. Uh, so uh, let us uh, consider the following experiment. Let us assume that I do some uh, psycholinguistical study uh, and uh, in my experimental settings, uh, I have some informant uh, or better say uh, different informants. And uh, I show uh, some stimuli to each informant. Let me assume that uh, this stimuli is some sentence, for example. Uh, like um, washed in the frame. And uh, then um, informant uh, have to report uh, is uh, this a correct sentence or incorrect sentence uh, from their uh, understanding of the language. And we measure uh, two uh, results of this uh, experiment. Uh, first, we record uh, is uh, the informant uh, correct or not, according to some other rules. And uh, another uh, important variable that we measure is reaction time. So let us uh, consider this variable and we have something uh, we have Uh, we have a table like this. We have reaction time. And uh, then, you know, for example, we have uh, some variable that is related to, uh, for example, participant age. And uh, we measure, uh, for example, we have two uh, in, in our group, uh, some, particip some participants are monolinguals and some are bilinguals. Uh, so we have another variable uh, that uh, says, is it true that a particular participant is uh, bilingual? And uh, so we have uh, a data like uh, this. Uh, we have, for example, uh, reaction time in milliseconds age in years and uh, bilingual is categorical variable that can be yes or not. Uh, so for example, bilingual no. and so on. And uh, now we are interested in some, um, in some model that uh, allows us to uh, find uh, the relation between this reaction time, which will be our, uh, our dependent variable and other, and other variables that we have in this table. Uh, so, uh, we have uh, as, uh, as the start, uh, we have something like reaction time as a function of age. Uh, we have this model. And this is just simple bivariate uh, regression model. And this is what we uh, already seen. Uh, then I want to include this uh, bilingual variable into this model. Uh, unfortunately, uh, with this with these formulas, I can use only numeric values because I do some arithmetic here, and I have to be able to find some uh, products, uh, sums, and so on. So, uh, are there any ideas how to 
include uh, this bilingual variable into my model. So uh, it means that I believe uh, that uh, this bilinguality can affect uh, direction time variable. For example, I believe that uh, people who are bilingual uh, can react faster or then, or probably they can react slower. And I want to detect this, this effect. It is quite natural to assume, for example, that if uh, some person have to uh, have to decide uh, is grammatical structure is correct. If this person is bilingual, probably it is easier for them because they have more experience with parsing of these grammars, or probably it is more difficult for them because they have more grammars to consider. So both, uh, both effects can happen. And I want to detect from the data which effect happens, or there is no uh, such effect at all, or people who are bilinguals uh, have the same reaction time uh, uh, as people who are monolinguals. So uh, this is quite natural. Uh, and uh, I want to use linear regression to, uh, to, to Uh, make a decision how to do it. Mm. It's a complicated question, but uh, if you would change no and yes to zero and one. Yeah, that's, uh, that's perfectly correct. Mm -hmm. I have objections to that. Yes, yes. Isn't because I would consider it the wrong step because zero and one are not yes and no because one is bigger than zero. So they are in different relationships. Yeah, let us discuss, let us discuss it because this is, uh, first of all, this is, uh, this is a perfect, uh, 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 both of your statements uh, are very good. Uh, first of all, uh, it is a good idea to encode them by zero and one. And after that, it is a good idea to ask is this encoding is correct or not. Let us, uh, let us uh, try to understand what happens when we do it. So indeed, uh, let us uh, make an encoding. So encode. Uh, for example, we can encode no by zero and yes by one. And uh, so now uh, from uh, the viewpoint of regression, we have a column of zeros and ones. And uh, these zeros and ones uh, can be included in our model. Uh, and uh, let us look what happens, what happens next. Uh, so we have something like this. And uh, we have a new variable. Let me, um, okay, uh, let me name this new variable uh, as, for example, uh, bilingual equals yes. And this variable uh, that is that with title bilingual, uh, bilingual equals yes. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll have values uh, zeros and ones. And uh, so we have this new beta, uh, bilingual yes. And we, uh, uh, then we multiply uh, it by the value of uh, this column. In fact, this column also denoted uh, by letter D with uh, the same index. D is called the dummy variable. Uh, so um, let me just say that uh, this is exactly this column. Uh, so uh, first of all, uh, this, is, uh, this is now uh, just a new regression model and we can fit 
this regression model with our data and everything will work. But now uh, the interesting question is how can we interpret uh, this coefficient? Uh, to uh, answer this question, let us uh, consider a bit simpler regression model that is uh, written here. Uh, let us for a moment exclude this variable from the model. And let us consider a, a very simple model, bivariate model that uh, contains only this variable, only this uh, independent variable. So uh, consider model beta bivimq yes times and d bivimq yes so again let me write that d bivimq yes is a variable that takes values one if variable bivimq Uh, equals yes and zero otherwise. Uh, and uh, let us find, uh, um, uh, let us uh, discuss interpretation of uh, these coefficients. Uh, for example, what can you say about about the value of b to naught. How can we interpret uh, the value of b to naught? The reaction time when uh, the person is neither bilingual, bilingual nor uh, Mm -hmm. uh, no, it is impossible for a person to be neither bilingual nor not bilingual because it is just a mutually exclusive alternative. So, uh, yes, <laughs> but as uh, a, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, until we add this variable, we can't say anything about this person. So it's like zero level this uh, factor. Mm. Yes, but in fact, we have zero level uh, in this uh, in this equation. I mean that, um, so uh, we say that uh, uh, we say that uh, reaction time is b to naught plus this term. So uh, sometimes it is possible that reaction time is just equals to b to naught. Uh, when does it happen? For which for which uh, informants it happens when reaction time equals to b to naught according to our model monolinguals for monolinguals exactly uh, because for monolinguals uh, we have uh, this okay let me ask uh, let me ask somebody else uh, can uh, can you say why. Uh, why it is true that uh, b to naught is uh, average reaction time, average RT for monolinguals. Uh, why can we uh, why can we say uh, this uh, when we look at uh, this formula and if we believe that this model is correct? Why we can interpret? Why can we give this interpretation of B to naught? Anybody can comment except of Natalia, who proposed uh, this encoding.
So in, in fact, I can erase this word average uh, for for now because uh, I say that we believe in this model as an exact model. Uh, so who can comment why uh, why this uh, is a good interpretation? Uh, I think I missed something, but uh, could you please repeat what D means? Do you want to So uh, well, uh, the, uh, this variable, uh, this variable is the following: we add a new, uh, we add a new column to our initial table, and this column simply uh, has uh, zero if here is no, and one if here is yes. So uh, these zeros and ones, uh, they are just answer to the question, is it true that uh, variable bilingual is yes? And uh, this new variable is denoted by uh, this letter D with index uh, bilingual yes. And uh, this uh, is usually called dummy variable. And this is just a notation. So uh, for each person, um, so in our table, uh, one row is one person. So one observation is one person. And this person can be either bilingual or not. Uh, and uh, according to uh, his or her bilinguality, we have the value of this, uh, of this variable, uh, D bilingual, yes. So uh, then we believe uh, that we have uh, this relation between uh, between re reaction time and bilinguality. And uh, I want you to ask uh, why uh, we say that beta naught in this case can be interpreted as reaction time for monolinguals. So can I maybe try? Uh, mm -hmm. If kind of uh, monolingual person would uh, have uh, a zero in D because it's like zero uh, bilinguality, I guess. So we have zero, mm -hmm. and then uh, we multiply a beta uh, bilingual by zero, mm -hmm. and then we just have beta zero left. So yeah, exactly, exactly, one. exactly. Yeah, this is uh, this is exactly correct. Uh, correct answer, indeed, uh, uh, indeed. Uh, for uh, for monolinguals, d uh, bilingual yes uh, equals to zero, and uh, therefore uh, R t equals to b to naught plus uh, b to bilingual uh, times zero, and so this is just b to naught. That is correct. Uh, now uh, I want to ask uh, somebody else, uh, uh, somebody who didn't uh, answer it yes, uh, yet, uh, how can we interpret, uh, how can we interpret uh, this uh, coefficient beta, uh, beta bilink, bilink yes. So uh, we have interpretation of this coefficient. And now I'm asking how to interpret uh, this coefficient. Can I clarify that this will also be represented by either a zero or a one? Uh, sorry, can you repeat, please? I just wanted to clarify this variable can either be represented by either a zero or a one. Or uh, no, no, uh, uh, no, no, look, uh, this variable is uh, either zero or either one, this D. Uh, this is actually a variable that is obtained from the data. Uh, 
-huh. And uh, this is a coefficient. Uh, this coefficient can be arbitrary, just like this one. So uh, how can we interpret this coefficient? We said that beta naught uh, is reaction time for monolinguals. What about uh, this value? So is this going to be the reaction time for bilinguals? Uh, why do you think so? Uh, because we have a reaction time for monolinguals as beta naught, which is just going to be that one variable. Mm, I think I confused myself. Mm -hmm. So uh, let us consider some individual who uh, who is uh, bilingual, and uh, let us find uh, their reaction time according to this uh, according to this formula. Uh, what is a uh, reaction time of a uh, bilingual person? According to the model. How can we find it? So uh, we already know that uh, for monolingual person, uh, reaction time simply equals to beta naught. Uh, what can we say about uh, the reaction time uh, for bilingual person? Beta naught plus beta bilingual. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So uh, uh, RT in this case equals to beta naught plus uh, beta bilink, yes. Uh, because uh, we have to multiply, if, if a person is bilingual, then uh, the value of this dummy variable is one. And then I have just multiply this one by this variable and uh, to make a summation. So to multiply by one is uh, simply like do not do not uh, change the value at all. Uh, so we have this. So uh, now we have two relations. We say that for monolinguals, reaction time equals to beta naught, and for bilinguals, reaction time equals to beta naught plus uh, beta bilink yes. Uh, how can you interpret this B to B link yes from uh, from this from these two relations? Is the difference in reaction times between monolingual and bilingual person? Exactly, exactly. So uh, B to B link yes is just difference of reaction time. Um, between uh, bilingual and monolingual. So uh, basically bilingual minus monolingual. Exactly. Uh, so Uh, now, actually, uh, I can uh, return to uh, Natalia's question uh, about, uh, is it correct to do this encoding? Uh, in fact, uh, you see uh, that we have a very interpretable and very natural interpretation of the coefficient that we get. Uh, so uh, this encoding uh, seemed to be uh, that it, it makes sense. Uh, but probably uh, we can try a different encoding. For example, we can put uh, one here and zeros here. Uh, what changes in this case? 
if I get if I will denote uh, bilinguals uh, by zeros and monolinguals by one. Uh, can I do that? Of course, it is my um, actually there is no any uh, any way to um, prefer one method over uh, another method. It is possible, for example, that I have variable that is called monolingual and there will be a yes and no here and uh, there will be uh, opposite to the ones that I have here. Uh, so uh, what changes if I change this encoding to the opposite? If it change, the beta note will be the reaction time of the bilingual and the beta note plus beta bilinguals will be the um, reaction time for uh, monolinguals. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, yeah, uh, this, uh, uh, if I consider if I consider a model that uh, is called, for, for example, reaction time equals to beta naught plus uh, beta uh, billion null uh, times dummy variable billion null. So billion null uh, is dummy variable that is opposite to to this variable billion keys. Uh, then a, a, we have uh, a bit different interpret interpretation. Uh, now B to not B to not is a reaction time of of what informants of of who? Bilinguals. Uh, of uh, bilinguals. Yes, and uh, beta link no is uh, is what again it is a difference difference of reaction time but what kind of difference uh, here it was bilinguals minus monolinguals and what uh, would you get here Monolinguals minus bilingual. Mm -hmm, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so uh, you see that we have um, uh, we we have to make a choice uh, which variable to use, and uh, actually both both uh, choices are correct, but interpretation uh, of our coefficient depends on the choice. And uh, of course, when we interpret the results, we have to remember uh, which variable, which encoding of our categorical variable we, we chose. Um, are there any questions so far? Uh, now uh, we can return to uh, we can return to the case when we have two variables like like this, for example, age and this bilinguality. And let us look at uh, this equation and let us construct the following uh, the corresponding graph. So let me rewrite it once again. RT equals to beta naught plus uh, beta H times H plus beta billion keys times dummy variable that corresponds to billion keys.
Uh, now, uh, let us try to draw the corresponding graphs here. Uh, unfortunately, I cannot draw graphs in more than two dimensions. So I will draw graphs in uh, like H and reaction time. And I will denote uh, this variable, this dummy variable by different colors. Uh, so uh, let us consider only individuals who are monolinguals. For, this, for these individuals, I don't have this term and my relation is uh, simply uh, this, this one. And so this is just a straight line. Uh, let us assume that I have some, mm, let me plug uh, just some uh, arbitrary uh, numbers just to, uh, make this picture uh, simple to construct. Assume that I have these numbers as my coefficients. Uh, then uh, oh, what can you say about the line uh, that corresponds to uh, monolinguals. So uh, how can you describe the corresponding relation between reaction time and age for monolinguals? With every year, the reaction time decreases mm. for one. Yes, and we begin at 30. So this is a straight line like this. Of course, it is not possible to get negative reaction time, but uh, assume that we study only children. So our ages are somewhere here. Uh, and uh, they do not approach this this part. Uh, and uh, what can you say uh, about uh, bilinguals? Uh, how this, yeah, actually negative part of this picture also doesn't make sense. Uh, uh, what can you say about bilinguals? Uh, how the curve for bilinguals changes uh, with respect to curve for monolinguals. In fact, for monolinguals, uh, we have uh, reaction time equals 30 minus beta H. And for bilinguals, the equation will look like, like what? Thirty minus uh, pi uh, beta h minus five. Minus five, exactly, because five for minus exactly beta. for monolinguals, uh, this variable is one, and uh, this variable is minus five by uh, our assumption. So we have here just minus five, and uh, the equation becomes like twenty-five minus beta h. So uh, what can you say about the corresponding line on the graph? How it is located with respect to the line that I already drew? It starts from mm, 25 to decrease. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is, uh, it is five units lower. And uh, this is a parallel line uh, that is just that is just five five units lower like this. So, 
we can interpret uh, this uh, this better within kiosk this this variable we can interpret it in the following terms we can say that if i fix age for a fixed age uh, this uh, this uh, number negative five shows that for a fixed age uh, people who are bilinguals uh, have reaction time that are five milliseconds lower than people who are monolinguals according to according to this model if uh, these are uh, real values of our coefficients i have a question yes could, could we maybe please go through the equations that we have one more time but slower because i'm not sure i get where the numbers like mm -hmm. So uh, these uh, these numbers, I just uh, I just put them uh, from my head. Uh, I just I just need some numbers to be able to draw this picture, and I just said uh, let us assume that these numbers uh, equals to what uh, I've written, and then uh, I try to interpret how we would interpret these numbers if we believe in this in this equation. Uh, and then I draw two parts of, um, actually, I, I try to draw a graph of this equation, but uh, I have to, uh, actually, I, I have to draw not just a graph of a function, uh, because uh, I draw it, uh, in, in this picture, I have only uh, h as my horizontal variable, uh, as my x variable, and so I distinguish uh, values that corresponds to different uh, values of this variable, of this bilinguality, I distinguish them by color. So um, we see that for people who are monolingual, uh, the, uh, the value of this variable is zero. So for, for people who are monolingual, uh, we have just this equation. And uh, if I put uh, the numbers, I have just this equation. And this is the graph that corresponds to this equation. This is, uh, this is how uh, reaction time depends on age for, for oh, sorry, I have, I have incorrect uh, wording here. This is for monolinguals. And this is for monolinguals. And this is for bilinguals. Okay. So I have two different equations, uh, one for monolinguals and one for bilinguals. And for monolinguals, this is this equation. And for uh, bilinguals, this is this equation that uh, is very similar to this one, but uh, what changes is this intercept. Here it is five units uh, smaller. So it means that all values, uh, all values here are just five uh, units lower than the corresponding than the corresponding points here. Okay, got it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. More questions? Okay, uh, then, uh, so now interpretation of, of uh, this beta billion keys is uh, the following. Uh, they, uh, these are, uh, Uh, the difference of reaction time uh, of reaction time uh, for uh, informants of the same year uh, between bilinguals and monolinguals. Mm 
uh, again, it is uh, bilingual minus monolingual. Uh, and uh, actually this corresponds to our general approach to the interpretation of coefficients uh, of uh, uh, in uh, multivariate regressions because uh, we say that coefficients shows uh, how, uh, how, what is the increase of uh, this dependent variable when we increase uh, this independent variable by one uh, and keep all other variables fixed. So uh, this is basically the same as usual. Okay. Uh, now uh, we have, uh, so far, uh, so far we had only uh, on the categorical variable with two possible values. And we encoded these values by zeros and ones. Uh, what happens if we have categorical variable with several, uh, with several possible values? For example, assume that we have something like city. And uh, this city can be Moscow, St. Petersburg and Novosibirsk. How would you encode uh, this variable? Maybe it would be just uh, one, two, and uh, three because they're all equal. So they all should be positive. Uh, well, one, two, three. Yeah, it is. Uh, it is natural idea to to put something like this, but in this case, it is not correct. At least in case of, uh, at least in case of, uh, uh, linear regression models. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, it is. It is okay if you have if you have just two levels it is okay to denote one level by zero and another level by one. You don't impose any additional restrictions uh, in this case. But if you have three levels and you encode them by like, like this, um, then it, seem, it means, for example, that the difference between Moscow and St. Petersburg should be the same as the difference between St. Petersburg and Novosibirsk. Uh, and uh, it just does not make sense. Just because the difference between these two numbers and these two numbers uh, are equal, it doesn't mean that uh, we have a similar relation between these, between these cities. And uh, in mm -hmm. fact... Mm -hmm. So maybe x, y, and z instead, or it will also be... Yeah, uh, but, uh, uh, but... It will contribute have... nothing. You have, you have, you have to, you have to transform, you have to transform this categorical uh, variable into some numerical variables. So X, Y, Z uh, are just letters or something like this, but uh, it doesn't, I don't understand how would you put some numeric variables so that you can plug into uh, linear regression. Can something be negative? Mm -hmm. uh, again, uh, whatever numbers you put here, you uh, you impose uh, some 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 restriction, uh, like you you say something about, for example, if you consider difference between these numbers and difference between these numbers, they have to to, to make some sense, but uh, they don't make sense if you if you consider these three cities. In fact, uh, the correct way to encode uh, this uh, variable like this is the following. We introduced not one, but uh, several dummy variables to encode one categorical variable. In fact, uh, we, can, uh, we can say something like this. We have city 
and uh, we have, for example, Moscow, Saint Petersburg, and Novosibirsk. And uh, then let us consider two dummy variables. For example, uh, dummy for uh, Saint Petersburg. and uh, dummy for Novosibirsk. City Novosibirsk. City Novosibirsk. And uh, now we have, actually each dummy variable just uh, equals one when uh for for only one value of the corresponding categorical variable so uh, we have uh zero one zero and we have zero one one uh zero zero one And uh, then let us consider uh, a regression. Okay, let us return to our reaction time example. And let us consider a uh, regression like this. Beta naught plus, plus beta CTS per B times dummy CTS per B plus beta CT over SIP. Novosibirsk times done and again I ask you uh, about the interpretation of these coefficients uh, let us begin with beta naught how to interpret beta naught It's um, the result when the city is Moscow. Yes, it is reaction time for uh, informants from Moscow. Uh, because according to our encoding, uh, for Moscow, both dummy variables uh, that we consider are zero. So we have a value here to be zero and value here to be zero. So we have just a reaction time equals to B to naught. Uh, then uh, what about beta CTS per bam? Uh, I have maybe a stupid question, but why do we yes. have dummies for this per bam? Uh, sorry, can you repeat, please? Yeah, why don't why do we only have dummy value for uh, SPB and Novosibirsk? Yeah, that's a good question. In fact, um, actually, we have three we have three variable we have three possible values here, and I put two dummy variables here. Uh, this is uh, more or less like the previous example when we had two values uh, of my categorical variable, uh, like here, we have two values and we have only one dummy variable here because it is enough for us to have only one dummy variable and to encode uh, these values in one-to-one uh, uh, -one way. And uh, here is a um, similar situation. We have three values here, three possible values here, and we need only two dummy variables to uh, encode uh, all of them. Because uh, Moscow is encoded by two zeros, uh, since Petersburg is encoded by zero, then one, uh, sorry, one, then zero, and Novosibirsk is encoded by uh, uh, zero, then one. 
So uh, anyway, this uh, encoding doesn't lose any information. And in fact, if we add a third uh, demo variable, uh, we, uh, we make our model, how to say it? Uh, well, uh, in fact, the third variable uh, that we uh, were able to add, uh, like dummy Moscow, uh, can be reconstructed from these two variables. And in fact, uh, for lin linear regression, this ability to reconstruct one variable from another variables is very bad because it makes everything, uh, it, it just doesn't allow linear regression to work. So uh, we use only two dummy variables here. And as a general rule, if you have uh, if you have categorical variable uh, with several uh, possible levels, then uh, the corresponding encoding uh, contains uh, dummy variables, uh, one less dummy variables than you have categorical level. So let us return to this uh, interpretation of what this beta city St. Petersburg says us, how can you interpret it? So this is gonna be beta not and beta uh, city for Novosibirsk because St. Petersburg is gonna have a value of... Uh, sorry, can you repeat this? This, uh, if I understand correctly, this would be beta not and Beta Novosibirsk, uh, since we're looking for the for Saint Petersburg value. Do I understand correctly? Uh, if um, so, uh, we can uh, we can uh, we can uh, look at this equation, and for example, ask the following question: What is reaction time uh, as we uh, as we consider? this uh, beta for city St. Petersburg, uh, we can consider uh, people who are from St. Petersburg. And uh, what can you say about this equation for informants from St. Petersburg? Uh, so for informants from St. Petersburg, What can you, how can you write uh, the reaction time? Beta not plus uh, the beta city is for that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, for people from St. Petersburg, uh, this variable is zero, right? According to our encoding table. And uh, that means that uh, in this case, reaction time equals to sum of these of this, uh, two values. So um, then we can uh, also, we know uh, that uh, beta naught is reaction time for, inf for informants from Moscow. And then we can say that this uh, beta city St. Petersburg is the difference in erection time. Uh, so this is the difference of reaction time between uh, people from SPB and Moscow. Right? Everybody agree? Uh, and now what is uh, beta city Novosibirsk? How can we interpret? How can we interpret this variable? So 
this will be reaction time equals beta naught plus beta cd for Navasiers. Mm -hmm. Yes, the corresponding equation like this. And what is the interpretation of of this variable now? This is difference between what and what. So it is the difference of reaction time between people from Novosibirsk and Moscow. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. Uh, from Novosibirsk and Moscow. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, you see that in this case, when you have three variables, uh, sorry, well, when you have three levels, uh, in this case, uh, I have Moscow, St. Petersburg, and Novosibirsk. And I choose one level to be uh, uh, a base level. In this case, this is Moscow. And base level is encoded by zeros uh, in all dummy variables. And after that, uh, all other uh, coefficients for all other dummy variables encode the difference uh, between uh, uh, between uh, observations uh, that has a particular value of our categorical variable and uh, base level. In this case, base level is Moscow. And so you measure difference with people from Moscow. Of course, you can consider different encoding. For example, you can put Novosibirsk as uh, base level and then you will get different values of coefficients because they will be measure uh, the difference between, uh, for example, between Moscow and Novosibirsk and St. Petersburg and Novosibirsk. Uh, but again, uh, these, um, these uh, well, uh, of course, uh, the results depend on uh, which, which uh, value you choose as base level, but usually it is uh, rather simple to understand the difference, uh, which difference you, you measure and uh, provide a correct interpretation. So uh, probably that's all that uh, I wanted to tell you today. Are there any questions more about, about this part? So basically, if you have a categorical variable, you just, you just encode them using these dummy variables and um, include in your model. Then uh, you can uh, take into account this, uh, this variable and uh, provide the interpretation of the corresponding coefficients. So, are there any questions? Okay, if there are no questions, uh, let us make a 10 minutes break and then continue studying regressions in R. So let us continue in 10 minutes.
Hi, everyone. Hello. Hello. Hi. Okay, so uh, today I want to uh, first show some uh, important cool things to work with text uh, with text in R. Uh, so you probably heard that, like, uh, well, for uh, for working with text, Python maybe is the best way, but R has actually very good. Um, Techniques to work uh, to work with uh, text, and I will show you some of them today. Uh, that can be helpful if you want to do uh, your whole analysis um, uh, in R, uh, including text analysis, because uh, actually uh, the, all the major things that you can do in Python with text, you can do with R, with R and it's pretty nice way to work actually. Uh, so um, uh, let's go to our studio. Uh, and today I want to show you the example, as for example, um, the project that I'm working on. Uh, it's our, uh, our drug core package. Uh, and to install it, you can use this line, DevTools install GitHub. I can just copy paste it to uh, uh, to Zoom chat. Mm. And let's have a look how it goes. For me, it asks uh, whether I want to update my dependencies. Uh, so it's like to... your screen. Excuse oh, me. I'm Should sorry. I'm sorry. Screen? Yes, yes. I'm sorry. Uh, yep. Okay. Do you see my screen now? Right. Right. Yeah, okay. Uh, so when I try to install this uh, package, uh, it asks me about whether I want to update my dependencies. I try to limit number of dependencies for this package. Uh, that's why I use data table instead of tidyverse uh, when I develop package, but um, it was just to, like, to, to, to make your life easier when you download package that you don't need to download 100 more packages but still it's it has some dependencies uh especially like curl and open uh, open csl and so on all these things for uh actually downloading data from internet uh and i just need to press actually anything uh because it really doesn't matter uh because um, it says that I have like a package version one for three and it wants to update it to one for four. It's usually not that uh, important uh, for these packages because they're quite conservative and I don't think that uh, it really has some dramatic changes from one version to another. Uh, but okay, let's try to update everything. Just to, to be clear that we are on the same uh, page. Okay. And now if uh, you successfully uh, install the package, you can uh, import it using function library. 
And then let's try to get some uh, drama as a text. Uh, Excuse me, and uh, if I get uh, an error that uh, there is no package named DevTools. Mm, okay, so in this case, you need to install package DevTools. Uh, it's very common package. Uh, uh, actually, uh, when you see the error that you don't have, like uh, there is no such package as something, uh, there are actually two possible, uh, the most probable causes for this error. The first one, you just misspell it and check that uh, it's like dev tools, not dev tools or something like that. Uh, and the second one, the second one uh, is that, uh, yeah, you don't have this package, but if you install it, you will solve the problem. Actually it's how it works for, I don't know, for everything, I think in the computer world more or less, like if you have like Linux, you just, you, you have those errors uh many times and you just use up get and install new uh like packages new libraries that you uh, don't have if you have like uh, error like i don't have this there is no such uh, library and you just install it if you get uh, and then you can get to another error that you don't have like uh, another package and you install that uh that um the package now so yeah just install it uh i don't i will not install it for me because i i have this package i think i think it's the most the latest the latest version uh but if you install dev tools uh you will definitely solve this issue uh yeah dev tools actually was initially a package for working with uh, for uh, actually package development, uh, but also it has some uh, cool functionality for importing uh, packages that are not on CRAN but on GitHub or uh, like uh, GitLab or somewhere else. Uh, that it's it was used, uh, it is used mostly uh, for this functionality actually. Um, okay, so I hope that everything is okay because if, if you still have this problem, just, uh, uh, just uh, tell me because it's important that you can follow what we do. So please uh, uh, send me plus the if you uh, uh, don't, uh, downloaded the package and successfully imported it. Uh, by successful import, I mean that if you run the line library Argra core, you don't get anything. Cool. how many students we have now hmm, actually not that much uh, okay if you have some problems ah okay uh, yes uh, that's that was exactly uh, like enter one of uh, one or more numbers on or an empty line to skip updates it's exactly what uh, I showed here uh, it asks me for uh, whether I want to update uh, dependencies. If uh, and if I want, which one I want to update. Uh, and uh, you need to select uh, you need to select the number. For here, I selected one to update all packages. You can select like known. I recommend you to use to to to, to press one actually. And, uh, update everything it will be a bit uh longer but not that much and you can see that it was not that long it has not so many uh not so many dependencies 
Nothing happens to me, actually. Uh, what do I mean by nothing happens? Because uh, nothing happens if you run the line library order core, it's completely okay. So if nothing happens after you run the line library order core, it means it's imported. So everything is okay. If you have some message, uh, you just need to look carefully. Um, okay. Uh, if you have any problems, just press minus or question or write me or whatever. It's important that we are on the same page and uh, otherwise uh, it'll be hard to productively work during the seminar. Uh, okay. I think that, I mean, if you have any problems, just uh, don't hesitate to ask me. Okay, okay. Oh, oh. Uh, permission denied. Um, I think, I think it's not crucial actually because. Um, um it tries to i think it tries to uh update the package curl but it cannot because permission denied uh because windows doesn't want you to change something in program files or maybe it's not program files no uh, I think you can try to run our studio uh, with administrator rights. So uh, when you like press, uh, like, um, when you uh, press on a button with our studio, uh, do the right click and like run as administrator. Открыть с правами администратора or something like that. Um, I think it can, it, it, it may uh, solve the problem, but actually uh, I think it, it is not uh, so much important. If you have some version of uh, curl, that will be okay. So just uh, um, try to run this line library order core and if you don't have any messages don't have any uh, errors i think it will be okay uh, okay so uh first uh let me remind you of this project uh so actually uh Dracor project is a project to uh, clarify uh, drama plays uh, in a specific format uh, called Text Encoding Initiative, TI. It's uh, some kind of, it's a type of XML, um, XML markup. Uh, that is good for, uh, that, is, that was specifically designed to store uh, historical and literature documents. Uh, so for literature, you can create specific, you have specific tags for different kinds of literature. You can even create your own uh, additional tags for that. And it's very good to like codify uh, place. For example, we can open, uh, let's say, Google Janiba. Where is Google Janiba? Hmm. Uh, that's strange, but okay. Ah, it's by year, I think. Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, let's uh, open a revisor. Uh, revisor, and uh, you can see here a graph uh, of uh, characters uh, that is based on uh whether uh two characters uh appear together in a one scene so if two characters appear in one scene 
they have uh, the edge between them. And uh, the more things that they appear together, the uh, thinner the, uh, the edge between them. Uh, and based on that, you can build the graph. And if you have uh, codified the text in this format, it's very uh, easy actually to programmably uh, create this graph for every encoded uh, NTI drama uh, to, to every encoded NTI drama. So uh, you can even download the full text, of course. You can do it in, uh, you can download it in TI format. You can see how it looks like. I can show you how it looks like. It's a bit long because it's used some, yeah. So uh, it very similar to how uh, how uh, for example internet pages looks like because uh, XML is something very close to HTML uh, and TI is just a subtype of XML so some speci very specific XML form uh, with specific uh, text. So you can see that there is a number of characters that are uh, described in some place, and you have some additional information for them, like whether it's uh, uh, male or female, uh, and even you have translated uh, names of pers uh, personage to other um, languages, and that's pretty cool. Uh, and also you have this kind of encoded text. But for now, we want to just take some text and we want to do something with it. So we'll just uh, want to download uh, this text uh, as a uh, in TXT format. Uh, and you can see this just as a plain text, this uh, resort play. Я пригласил вас, господа, с тем, чтобы сообщить вам при неприятной известии, к нам едет ревизор. Как ревизор, как ревизор, и and so on. Uh, without uh, actually characters, just the plain text of uh, their lines. Uh, and actually you can download it here, but if you want to download many plays, it can be very boring to just press one by one and download, 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 and so on. And uh, when you know programming, you don't do uh, boring things. You uh, make machines to, to do boring things. And uh, that's why here, for example, I will show it on only one text, but actually uh, using, for example, uh, uh, function map, or even for loops, but I would avoid it. Uh, you can download it, download all uh, text, uh, texts if you want. I can show you later how to do that if you want. But now I want to download just one text uh, using ArdraCorp package. Uh, oh no, I, I don't want Google Geneva, but let's say Revisor. Revisor. I think it's like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, я пригласил вас, господа. Can you please hear this call? Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and then if you download it you can see that it's actually uh, it's actually just a character vector uh, and let's see how it looks like so google 
revisor, let's say one. So every uh, every uh, value in this vector is just one line. So one, uh, yeah, one line, I don't know how to say, <laughs> uh, one paragraph of, uh, uh, one part of uh, uh, someone's uh, speech. Uh, я пригласил вас, господа, с тем, чтобы сообщить вам пренеприятное известие. К нам едет ревизор. Uh, and, uh, yeah, actually this play has uh, 947 lines. Uh, and then we can think, okay, but how can we analyze it? Uh, if I want to explore uh, appearance, for example, of some specific words, or uh, I want to, um, for example, check something like uh, uh, number of uh, verbs compared to nouns or something like that. How do I do that? Uh, so then I think you know this style, all the things, but well, and maybe even better than me, uh, uh, you need to uh, do some normalization text when you work with it. Question, how can I install Kyrillic alphabet in R? Uh, what do you mean by Kyrillic alphabet? What do you, ah, cause I have codes instead of characters. Mm. I think actually it's a problem of version of R that you use. The, there was some one version of R. I'm not sure which one. I think uh, I think it was ah latest one. Okay, if you have the latest one, so you have four o two, right? Because uh, there was one version just, uh, uh, ah, actually, yeah, it's not so late. My one is not the latest because I didn't update it because of these problems. Um, it, it, it had some problems with uh, uh, showing uh, the characters. Um, um yeah mm, actually the problem is that uh everything works fine i mean it's downloaded and uh yeah you have these codes uh and the problem is that i mean they're internally represented like these codes these characters but uh they do not appear to you Right. Yes. Yeah. The problem is just what I see, and um, I'm not sure that. I mean, mm, try to check whether it's the really the latest version because I think maybe it was solved in other versions, uh, or maybe it could be a problem of R Studio because I've heard of some kind of these things. It's quite a rare problem, but it appears somewhere. And I don't know what to do with it for now, actually. Uh, in which format do we download the Google text? Uh, in this case, if you use this function, it just, uh, it does not download it as a file. It just appears, uh, it just imported to, to your memory uh, and stored in like environment in R. So uh, actually, yeah, actually just a character vector and it doesn't create, a, create it doesn't create a, a TXT file uh, uh, anywhere uh, in your uh, working directory or something like that. Um, yeah. So if you want to just download the real files and you want to, for some reason, to have these files, uh, you can just use this uh, buttons and you will just, you know, click uh, where is it? Full text, token text, yeah. Just press this button and it's, it will be downloaded as text. But uh, 
if you want to to download many texts, uh, it's better uh, to do again using R, maybe using like my package. For example, you can uh, import many uh, TXT uh, files and then save them separately. Or you can just do directly like downloading uh, using uh, Dracor API and just download these uh, texts and save them and so on. Uh, so yeah, it depends on whether you want just one text because it's easier to just press button or if you want to, to have many, it will be easier uh, to do it uh, using uh, the code. Uh, okay, so uh, uh, we want to do some normalization of this uh, text because it's very hard to, 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 to do something with uh, this kind of format when you have uh, in one value, one line, because uh, it's hard to find some specific words and so on. And even if you have some sp uh, specific words, uh, you need to, you'll have some other problems. Uh, so, First, we want uh, what we want uh, to do is to tokenize this. So we want to separate our text in small tokens, some small atomic uh, values. Uh, it can be done differently, but the most simple way is just uh, tokenizing by words. So you want to have like a vector or data frame where one cell or one value in a vector is just one word. It's called tokenization. I think you know it, right? Just tell me because it's important for me because I think that something that is pretty common for linguists. Uh, and I think you uh, know something like that from other courses, in, for example, from Python courses uh, so maybe I just repeat very basic things to you, but if it's not, uh, 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 I actually explain very, very basic things that are pretty important. So please tell me whether you know all that. Come on, guys. Uh, have you heard of tokenization? Yeah, okay, you discussed it on Python. Okay, cool. Uh, okay, and now uh, let's uh, recover some things. So you just uh, discussed on one, on one course and it's good to, uh, uh, to, because maybe it's just repeated on every course and in this case, it, it will be useless. Uh, but if, if it was just one course, let's just like repeat some things uh, to make sure that we're on the same page. Uh, so, okay. Uh, if we do tokenization, what's the next problem that we have after we tokenize uh, the word? So assume that we divided, uh, divided all uh, the text in small tokens, in this case, words. So we divided it by words. Uh, and we want to um, check, for example, appearance and count some specific words. Uh, or explore, for example, uh, I don't know, entropy of the, of the text uh, or something like that. So calculate some statistic on, uh, on the text. What's the problem that we will have on the next step? After we tokenized in words, so, What's the problem that we will have and how you can possibly solve these problems? We may have different, uh, I'm not sure if this is what you're asking, but we may have <laughs> different uh, forms of one word, for example. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It's actually what uh, I'm asking, but yeah, I, I, it, it wasn't something like uh, 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 you need to find the right answer and so on. I want you to think uh, like 
uh, in terms of uh, you have a task, you have uh, problems and how you can solve it. Uh, because uh, actually for me, it was something that I just, I thought that I, I, invent, I, I invented this problem uh, and I invented some solutions to this problem. Uh, but then it appeared that, oh, okay, linguists know these problems for, for, for many years. Uh, because I just wanted to do cloud of words for some text and then it appeared that, yeah, uh, one word can appear in many forms. And actually we usually think that one word in different forms is just one word. Uh, and we want to somehow think that one word in different forms uh, is just the same word. Uh, and what can we do with it? Maybe there's some way to lemmatize. Lemma, lem, the, what's the, the yeah. term? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Lim limitization, right. Uh, or stemming. Uh, do you remember the difference between stemming and limitization? Or maybe you didn't even hear about, uh, hear about uh, stemming. Have you heard about stemming? Maybe I don't know the difference. Uh, so maybe there's a stone. Sorry? I personally do not know the difference mm -hmm. between the stemming and the limitization. So maybe there is a slow. Mm, no, no, there is a, uh, a difference between stemming is uh, a bit more simple than uh, limitization. Stemming is just, just take uh, like the root of the word, just cut uh, ending of the word. So it's a bit more simple way. Uh, but it's a bit more dirty, a dirty way. Uh, and limitization uh, just try to extract infinite, um, infinite uh, form of the word. And it's much more complicated because you need to like uh, you need to have some rather complicated model of the language to to extract infinite number of word, uh, infinite, uh, infinitive, uh, sorry, infinitive uh, form of the, uh, of the word. Um, and yeah, but it's uh, much more juicy, much more fruitful to have limitized but, uh, word than stamped word. Uh, so yeah, you need to tokenize, you need to lemmatize, uh, and in addition, it would be nice also to like automatically to, 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 to have also other, uh, information on position of word in the, uh, uh, sentence, for example, and so on. And, uh, uh, actually, there are many packages that you can apply for the specific tests. But actually, my favorite one is UGPipe. UGPipe is uh, actually not a R package. It just uh, it's written as in C or C++ as far as I remember. So it's uh, basically Uh, yeah, standalone C++ application with bindings for Python, Java, C Sharp, Perl, and, and so on. And also there is a uh, package that uses uh, this uh, UGPy in R. And uh, in, in this case, you just uh, provide uh, a, a text as a, for example, vector, text vector. Uh, and uh, you just need to give a model. Uh, there are several ways, but for example, you can just say, for example, object equal Russian, and it will take uh, some default model 
uh, for uh, uh, for this uh, language. So, in order to uh, use this package, Unipipe, uh, you need to install it first, of course. So, install packages Unipipe. Uh, it can be a bit. It can take some time, uh, and then. Uh, you just use a function UDPipe from this package and provide a, a model that you downloaded. It's the, maybe the better way, but the easiest way is just to say object equal Russian and it downloads uh, if uh, you don't have, uh, where did you find what is the Google Genie value? Uh, I, I, ah, sorry, sorry, yeah, let's, uh, I, I wanted to show you on Google Junilpa, but then I found out that actually Revisor is a bit more popular and I switched to Revisor. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, so uh, you just uh, uh, use this function Gpi. The first uh, argument for this function is your character vector. Uh, with the text. Uh, and the second one, it can be just one value, for example, doesn't matter. Uh, and the second one is a either object of the model uh, that you download it, uh, or just you can set object equal Russian, for example, and it download it, downloads the model. Uh, you can try. Uh, for me, I think it's already downloaded. You can see in your working directory, actually there is a new file, Russian GSD UD25 uh, UD pipe with UD pipe format. It's a model uh, and you can see it's pretty big actually. It's uh, uh, 13 megabytes. So it's not that small. So uh, if you run this line, it can be actually quite long because it first need to download this model. Uh, then it uses this model uh, to tokenize uh, this text. And you can see that actually even tokenizing usually not that fast because it's quite complicated. Uh, but then you have very nice, very nice ta uh, table. Let's have a look on that. So now I convert it with a character vector to a data frame. And when we work in R, you remember, we like data frames, uh, we enjoy data frames. Uh, and you can see that uh, actually every uh, row in this data frame is a verb. Oh, is a word, sorry, is a word. Uh, so it's uh, like, tidy way to work with text. So one token uh, is one row. And you have some all extra information on this uh, on this uh, tokens. So for example, you have uh, like start and, and then position in the, uh, in the sentence. It's divided by sentence, for example. Uh, Mm, what's next? Uh, you have like original token and also you have lemma, so lemmatized version. So you can see, for example, uh, ya converts to ya, okay, nothing changed, uh, just it became smaller, uh, it was capital ya, now it's just normal ya, it doesn't matter. But here you can see Pilgola Hill, uh, it converts it turns into Piglasit. So Piglasit is a uh, past form and Piglasit is an infinitive form. Uh, the same for Vas, it turns into V. Uh, Gospot, I don't know whether Gospot is an infinitive version of Gospoda, but you, you uh, need to understand that it it works not like ideally because it just, yeah. For example, for incognita, it uh, takes, uh, it, it uh, turns into lemma incognit, 
it, it, it doesn't make sense. So it is not super perfect, but it works in most of the time. Uh, and you can extract also, uh, do, do you know why it tells me that I cannot find the uh, pipe function? Uh, uh, um, remember that, uh, yeah, you, you have everything installed, but every time you open RStudio again, you need to import this uh, uh, packages again. So you need to install it only once using install packages. Uh, but every time uh, uh, you work in, uh, you open your R session, you need to run this uh, library Argacore, library Tidyverse. Uh, yeah, I forgot to, I think it was in my uh, session before, uh, imported somewhere, uh, maybe in console and, uh, but uh, yeah. I, I should include, I should have included uh, library tidyverse too in, and run this line. Um, I get an error. Okay. Extender pointer is not valid. Mm. Uh, can you please copy uh, this line? Because it seems that uh, it cannot uh, it cannot find a model. So um, please copy the whole lines that you run. Uh, maybe it can be because you, for example, have something different in object. It can be. Uh, and also check that you in your working directory have uh, this uh, new UG pipe file with a model because it seems that you don't have a model. So, okay, uh, and now you have, uh, you, uh, uh, have this tidy format of, uh, the text where every token, in this case, the word has all like extra information. Uh, what can be interesting here? Uh, well, uh, for example, you can uh, be interested in uh, this what, uh, this uh, variable FIPS that contains some additional information about like case of word and so on. So for example, for some uh, words, we have case. Uh, I don't know how, how they in English, like uh, immediately, relatively, uh, dativny, uh, vinitelny, uh, tvoritelny, i predložny. Oh, it was so long. I'm not sure about the type of, I remember cases, Russian cases. Uh, and you want to extract them somehow. Uh, okay, uh, to, to, to go to that, uh, I, I want to be sure that everyone uh, get this table and please, please uh, send me a plus if you have it and send minus if you have problems. I'm sorry, but I keep having pro. Uh, that's okay. That's okay. Let's uh, check what you have. Uh, okay, we have four pluses, and we have two. Okay, uh, 
in this case, you have just view, you, you need to use big V instead of small V. Check that. Yeah, but I mean, uh, check that. Uh, yeah, uh, you need to in uh, uh, this view function, just uh, use capital V instead of small V. Just this. What you write is this. Uh, totally nice and oh, it works, huh? It's fun. Uh, whoa, whoa, that's uh, that's really fun because uh, previously it was very common uh, error, and I think that they just understand that it's very common, and because of that they. Uh, uh, they added uh, they added uh, a version with small v to a table package. Uh, yeah, because it, it's quite big. I mean, not that big really. But if you want, if you open it as a table in this view, it can be long. I mean, it's always long if you work uh, with the tables uh, in this way. That's also another reason um, why you you need to switch from, for example, uh, Excel and SPSS to R because if you have uh, like more than like some. Uh, hundreds of thousands, for example, lines, uh, Excel will just not work. I mean, it will be so long that it will be literally impossible to work with. So, and it's, it's a real limitation. For example, when you, uh, for example, when you work as a data analyst and you need to uh, prepare uh, some data for uh, someone in Excel format, uh, but the problem is that uh, you are limited in what you can send them uh, in terms of, uh, you can create, for example, in R, uh, a big uh, uh, Excel tab table uh, with millions of lines. Uh, but it will be impossible to open it in Excel, so it will make no uh, it will make no sense. So this is a limitation in R. Uh, the same problem you'll have with uh, uh, viewing uh, the table uh, in this uh, R Studio viewer uh, table viewer uh, because for some small tables, I mean less than. Uh, less than let's say 100,000 of lines, uh, it will be okay. But uh, if you have bigger uh, table, uh, it will be pretty slow. Uh, it can be glitchy. So uh, in this case, you, you just have no such option. Uh, and it's really not making so much sense because you just, you cannot scroll it and absorb everything. Uh, you can just take some sample from it and explore it this way, uh, but not the whole uh, big table. Uh, okay, I hope that as for now, everyone Uh, godless table. And then we can do some uh, nice analysis uh, on that. Uh, for example, you can, sorry. Nice. Um, I don't know, you can, for example, you can uh, calculate uh, I know number of verbs or uh, ratio of verbs to nouns or whatever. So if you want to do that, you can just 
you summarize uh, and calculate uh, summarize I will do it like that I will do it like count oh, sorry uh, count you pause and then for example I will take only uh, summarize uh, let's say um, Mm. Uh, let's say let's do it like uh, pivot wider mm. calls or not n calls or not argument respond. Uh, pivot wider, pivot wider. Mm, names, names from yeah, name from names names from boss and values from n. Yeah, so we just like uh, uh, transpose it to, to make it wider. Uh, and also we can now calculate, oh, let's say transmute um, verb divide by noun. just one way i'm not sure that it will be the best way to do that because it seems like a bit uh, uh using pivot wider here maybe it's a bit excessive you can do it actually other way for example uh just uh do it in one summarize and just uh using uh, sum of comparing to some value, for example, to do the same thing. I think you can do summarize and sum you pause equal to verb uh, delete oh, divide by sum you pause equal to noun. Yeah, basically the same, but a bit shorter, <laughs> yes. Uh, and yeah, again, but what if you are interested in these uh, cases, for example? Uh, in another group, we explored uh, some Bacalor, uh, war, uh, Bacalor's uh, work on uh, cases in uh, one language. And uh, so it can be of particular interest to extract uh, cases, maybe for specific, uh, specific uh, parts of speech. Uh, for example, only for, uh, only for, uh, only for nouns, for example, only for, yeah, let's say only for nouns. So you can extract only nouns or you can, you can actually, if you want to, uh, 
if you want to delete, for example, all like uh, unnecessary parts of speech, you can uh, delete, for example, uh, all uh, punctuation uh, marks, all um, all I would say предлоги, союзы, and uh, this meaningless uh, words from analysis, uh, or you just select uh, uh, parts of speech that uh, you are interested in. For example, you can just take verbs and nouns, let's say, like filter, uh, or pause in verb, now right uh, in this case it will be the same so with a function filter i will not change the structure uh, structure of this uh, uh table but i will take only uh rows where upos is verb or noun this way i just delete all other um, verbs uh or assume that you want to take only nouns and from them you want to take cases. In this case, you just use equal equal noun, delete one extra bracket. But here we have a problem that uh, it has some specific that uh, it has very specific uh, very specific form, right? Uh, so uh, this fix, it's actually a variable that contains several variables. And number of these variables inside this variable depends on uh, parts of speech that we are interested in. Uh, and what we can do with it, because it's not a tidy, uh, not a tidy uh, way of uh, storing uh, values, because it's very hard to analyze. Of course, you can use some regular expressions, for example, to extract uh, cases. Or you can just, if you know all cases that can appear, you can just uh, using general uh, using uh, regular expression expressions just to uh, just find them and calculate, for example, and create like new variable where you will have only this um, only this uh, case. But that's not really. Uh, it's not really, uh, uh, that's really rather dirty way to do that. And in Titleverse, you have really nice way to, to, to deal with this uh, problem. Uh, and this goes to actually package Tidir. It's a base, uh, basic, uh, package in Tidyverse that is uh, imported when you import Tidyverse. Uh, and uh, actually this package has a lot of functions, many functions for uh, tidification of your data. I'm sorry, Google, Google tokenized. Tokenized. Uh, and uh, for this specific task, you have a function separate in which you need to select uh, uh, select the uh, select the uh, variable that you want to separate. It will be. All equal to fix, and you need to create a new 
uh, you need to set uh, names for new columns. Uh, and we can just use uh, what is used here for now. Animacy case gender number. Uh, animacy uh, case gender number. Pam pam. What is the problem? What is the error? Uh, what, what is the cause of the error? Here. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you wrote a uh, toy tokenized instead yes. of tokenized. Yes, thank you. Uh, yeah. But uh, in this case, we have some problems because it says expected four pieces, additional pieces discarded in some rows, uh, in many rows actually. Uh, one, two, three, five. Okay, let's explore explore the result. Uh, or, ah, actually, yeah, because uh, in this case we have we applied it on all. Uh, on all uh, data set with different uh, words with different parts of speech. Uh, and uh, if we, I think if we do it, no, we still have some problems. Uh, let's, he, let's check again what we have here and why it does not work in this way. Uh, Let's have a look. Uh, I think I know the problem. Bom, bom. Hmm. The problem is actually uh, that I did not specify uh, what is a separator. So I want to use this vertical line as a separator. Um, pom pom, and let's do it. So, uh, uh, yep. And I will do vertical line. And this will cause me another problem, I think. Yeah. Uh, what do you think is the root of the problem? It's quite complicated, actually. But it's, uh, it can be helpful to to, to, to understand it, uh, if you, uh, it will be easier to understand if you look at the, uh, for the help for the separate uh, function. And I want you to answer me, what's wrong now? Now it separates every letter, so C, A, S. Mm -hmm. But why? I used a separated, uh, a separate uh, vertical line. What, what, what could go wrong? Mm, so maybe R reads of this vertical line as um, uh, as the, the end of the column. Mm. So, so when, I don't know, so when it meets vertical line uh, in the code, it uh, thinks that uh, uh, it is at the end of the column and it begins uh, with another column, I don't know. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we should look uh, um, for help from, you know, for which function, function separate, right? Yes, yes. And especially for uh, SEP parameter. Wait, so the, the line that we use as a separate 
point. Mm -hmm. Is it? It's not a numeric value, right? It's not considered. Yes. It's yeah, not but, numeric. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, but uh, you, you can see that uh, separator between columns. If characters, if character something if numeric is something so you have actually different options for uh, if numeric uh sep is interpreted uh, as character positions to split it so uh, you can just set like positions when you want to separate columns it can be useful but i never use it actually but if characters so if characters so what then it doesn't see that it should separate at that point. It, it just, actually, I'm not quite sure what it means that it is interpreted as a regular expression. Ah, mm. you know regular expressions? No, I do, but I just, like, what's the? I mean, yeah, that's the right uh, answer, actually. Regular expression, that's the root of the problem because uh, it's not use literal uh vertical line as a separator it interprets this sep parameter as a, a regular expression and vertical line uh i i hope you all know about regular expressions right i mean like am i am i am i right that you all know this hell and i mean yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we, yeah, of course, we, of course. Yeah, because you created it, you know, like linguists created it. And I mean, you're responsible for that. Uh, uh, so yeah, so a vertical line has a special meaning in a, a regular expression. It's, it means like logical or, and it actually, I don't know actually how it, works why it works but it's definitely not what we want so we want like literal vertical line uh, use literal vertical line not as a or in vert in regular expressions so this case we need to acronize uh, oh, how it's called in English I'm not sure but I think something like that so use this uh, slashes uh, to make uh, to make it work. And let's have a look now. Um, huh. Maybe two, but no, it's a bit more than I need now. Mm. Or taken case, hmm, that's strange. I think that this should work. Uh, let's have a look on help with uh, working with stringer, stringer. Cheat sheet, because stringer cheat sheet has also cheat sheet for working with regular expressions in R. Um, bum, bum, bum. So I want, ah, yeah, I know what's wrong. I use wrong, uh, uh, I use, I use wrong uh, slashes. So this will work, I think. Yeah, it works. It works, but expected four pieces, missing pieces filled with an A in one row. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, yeah, and the last thing that, the thing that you want to do, you want to like uh, mm, for this, uh, uh, variables you want to delete, for example, enumeracy equal. Uh, let's try to do that. So we can try to uh, keep the structure, uh, keep the structure flat. 
and we can do for example mutate across uh, and then select uh, we'll select uh, columns like this actually just animacy to number like that and for this uh, we will use something like uh, stir replace all no, stir replace will be just enough I think I think stir replace uh, replace and I think we need to just use some regular expressions here so like that I'm not sure that do I need to well I think I need to do it like that and then yeah I think it will work let's have a look yep it worked so how it work uh, so basically here I use this mutate but I want to manipulate uh, several uh, columns at once so uh, I want to apply some function uh, to modify uh, several variables several columns at once in this case I use across in, uh, inside mutate across is very powerful function it's very advanced thing and it's pretty new for tidyverse but it's a very power powerful thing so the logic of across is uh, you put across inside mutate or summarize basically but you can also use it in other functions too uh, that uses formally all functions in tidyverse that use data masking uh, uh, then you need inside across first you need to uh select first you need to select must only be used inside deep layer verbs uh yes i think that you have something uh different because i use across inside mutate if you use across outside of mutate or summarize or similar uh function in deep layer that uses uh, data masking uh, you will get error so across is like a helper function inside mutate or uh, yeah I can copy but I, I just want to show some uh, nice advanced tricks uh, to show you how to deal with real world problems like when you have this way uh, collected um, uh, values and what you need to do to make it pretty make it uh, okay to work with it uh, so uh, inside across so you put across inside mutate and inside across uh, the first argument is a selection of uh, columns using tidy selection so it's basically like we worked in this uh, select function the same logic the same uh, select helpers will work and the next argument in across is a function that is applied for every uh, for every uh, value for, for every column in this case I use a function stir replace and it has some additional parameters basically 
parameters that uh, is the search pattern. Uh, and what is what it will be replaced with. And this uh, parameters, this extra parameters, they go after comma as other parameters inside a cross function. So basically the logic of how a cross function works is pretty similar to uh, Laplace function or uh, functions uh, map from map family uh, in poor. It's quite advanced functional programming. Maybe you know some kind of things in Python, but they, I think they're a bit less popular in Python uh, because I mean, uh, functional paradigm is important in Python, but it's not like in R it's the main paradigm. And uh, this functional way of working is pretty important in R. It's super important. It's not just like, okay, we also have something like that. Uh, in R, it's, uh, uh, it's very basic and it's one of the most important things. So you'd better to, to, to understand this uh, functional uh, thinking about the data. Uh, and logic of this logic of this Laplace functions, uh, map functions, and and basically across to. Uh, so it uh, applies uh, this function on all these columns with these parameters. That's one way to do it, and maybe not even the best one. Because it's okay here where you know that you have like uh, only this specific, uh, only this specific uh, uh, additional parameters for every token. But what if you want to extract, for example, a case from like uh, different uh, words from different parts of speech? Uh, in this case, uh, you can try to apply separate, but it will not make it really uh, cool. We can try and we can see what it what it'll, uh, what it will uh, give us. Uh, what does it mean when it say error view across must only be uh, used uh, inside the player words. Uh, yeah, I think I explained it, right? We have few two times in the end of the separate line, state line. Oh, yes. Uh, No, ah, not, yeah, you... uh, not you in your code, yeah, but mm -hmm. I, I had the same problem. I had a uh, view two times, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just uh, used to use view inside pipes to get it, uh, to this uh, viewer automatically. Uh, okay, just let's try to delete the filter line and let's see how it will work. So you'll get warning. And you can see that, yeah, for some, you have like an A, that's okay. Uh, but actually you have uh, some um, columns that are even not here. So basically, uh, and also you have another problem that uh, the order uh, can be different, maybe different in different, uh, for different uh, uh, parts of speech. For example, for nouns case uh, goes the second and for pronouns it goes as a first. And that's why you, you can, you, it's very hard to deal it this way. Uh, in this case, you have another function Tokenized 
separate rows the same but uh, you have a uh, uh, this uh, suffix rows it means that instead of separating columns widely like uh, uh, except that there is some kind of pressure uh, in this uh, way of storing the data right so uh, you you pressed uh, several variables inside one variable and you can um, unpress it uh, widely to several columns or you can uh, uh, extract it as several rows uh, so we'll get long format uh, and the same step and let's have a look how it will look like bam bam we detected this format did you misspecify? Hmm, I don't think so. Separate rows. Rows. Ah, I think that I need to use tidy selection here. Actually, I think maybe even here it's better to use it without rows. And yeah, and here too. No, fits. Uh, but unexpected names. Uh, hmm, that's strange. I really don't understand what's wrong with it. Because Google Tokenized has this fits. I mean, it's just basically the same as I no. no. Mm, data. Ah, okay. Yes, I don't need to use it as a sep uh, as a call. Uh, argument. So it's a bit, it has a bit different uh, syntaxes, syntax compared to simple separate because simple separate uh, you use a bit outdated uh, selection and uses, you need to specify it as a uh, Call parameter, but here you don't need to do that. Actually, if you do it like uh, the same way, you'll get an error. And now, now it works. And look, now we have for every token that we have uh, several rows. So, uh, and every uh, this parameter. Uh, has its own uh, its own role in the data, and uh, well, uh, now you need to be aware of that. For example, if you calculate now uh, proportion of verbs to nouns, it will be not incorrect because now you have more values for verbs and more values for nouns but not the same increase for verbs and for nouns so you, you should be aware of that uh, and that you you now you cannot just like calculate number of uh, uh, words by anything but it can be good if you want just to analyze this uh, parameters that we're interested in uh, the second thing that you can do, you can now you can apply it, uh, you can apply uh, separate one more time. Separate one more time, just simple separate this time. 
Uh, first, I will open it again. Uh, and now, what I need to uh, do to create uh, uh, what I need to use as a separator to create the two new columns. In uh, uh, one of them will be the name of the parameter case, for example, and for another will be value of the parameter num. What I need to do, what I need to set here, just, I mean, it's the same function as this. So you can just by analogy, uh, think of what I need to put here to make it work. So I understand the idea, right? So uh, we want to separate this column fits now in two different columns. In one column goes case, number, person, aspect, gender, mood, number, tense, uh, verb from words, case, number, person, and so on. To the second column goes uh, nom, uh, nom, sync, one, perf, mask, in, sync, past, fin, act, act, plur, two, and so on. Right? Uh, and now, please, uh, Give me a hint what to, to do here to, to do it this way, to separate it this way. Any ideas? Come on, just just give me, don't be shy. Maybe we need to um, to copy uh, the code from the uh, previous uh, line, like separate, etc. But uh, change uh, separator from vertical line to uh, the equal sign. No. Okay, let's try to do that. Pam pam. Something no, I, I, I mean, um, yeah, maybe I, I will. Not this line, right? Yeah, uh, I will write in the chat. Oh, this line, for example. Mm -hmm. ah, okay, okay. Let's just copy it. Mm -hmm. And now we have ah, we need to do it like that. View. Okay, but Something is a bit wrong. What's wrong here? Mm, there is nothing in gender and number. Yeah, and actually any machine case are actually just wrong variable names because this is something like a, in general like variable and this is like a value. So it's variable value pairs. It's not any machine case. Uh, so we need to change this uh, into to something new. Um, I don't know. Let's just call it variable and value. Variable and value. And now it's okay. Now it's okay. Uh, okay. And actually, we can explore that uh, you have not so many uh, values there. And now you can easily, I mean, if, uh, for example, now you can easily calculate, uh, for example, you have one case for one word. So 
you can just, uh, if you want to explore cases or uh, number forms or gender of words, uh, you can do it actually on what you have on this table. Uh, so just for example, calculating, uh, if you want, uh, you can just uh, filter by case, filter by case, uh, variable, ball, I don't know, case, right? And now you have only cases and then you can count uh, value. And whoa, you have more than six. What is VOC? I think it's uh, this uh, mysterious seventh. Maybe uh, maybe it's a vocative case, you no, know, like Svetin Padish. Maybe. Oh, oh, Boja, oh, oh, Vlodiko, what, what, what? Yeah, something like oh, okay, that. Okay. Yeah, I think yes. I think yes, yes. So it appears here. So the model knows about this thing. It's cool. Uh, yep. So and now you you extracted uh, cases for specific uh, for uh, this um, text. You can like download all uh, Google uh, Plays, for example, and explore dynamic of using um, cases and his uh, uh, works, for example. I don't know why, but, but why not? Uh, but actually, uh, you, you can explore that, uh, you can find out that uh, there are not so many like parameter uh, values. You can just even explore it by, ah, sorry by function count. We're a bit of, out of time, but. So, upper animacy, aspect, case, degree, foreign, gender, mode, number, blah, 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 blah. And also it can be, for example, case can be for uh, both for nouns and uh, and also something for for pronouns and yeah so uh, so it makes sense to make uh, this uh, table wide again. And do you have any ideas how to do that? In this case, you can use this function pivot, uh, pivot wider. Pivot wider. As that we explored previously. I'm pretty much sure about that. And in this case, we need to take values from uh, value. Uh, names from variable. Variable. And voila. Now we have like many uh, new columns, but now uh, in case you have only cases, in number you have only numbers, like singular, plural, it doesn't matter whether it was uh, pronoun or noun, you get in number, you get either singular or plural, you get person and so on. Could you copy your code? I have some problems. Okay, okay. Problem with filter input object variable not found. Or yeah, yeah. Th th uh, there was uh, one problem. Uh, yes, I found a problem. Into C variable. 
you have into variable. You you name it variable and then you cannot find it. You have it. Yes, thank you. Um, yeah, and with uh, the filter, uh, the, uh, the first code that you uh, uh, the okay, filter just can can, can uh, send uh, in the chat the two last. Okay, thank you. Um, so I really like this pattern because in this way, just using uh, separate rows and pivot wider, uh, you can expand your uh, table from this to this. And it's really magic. And just one line of codes of code. Uh, yeah, we have uh, one additional separate, so three line of codes, uh, just to actually uh, divide it by variable value pairs. But uh, it, it depends on your data that you have. If you have this uh, variable value pairs, you, you, you need to do that. If you have just values, for example, what can be? You have uh, IMDB uh, database, and you have, uh, for example, gender for every uh, for every uh, you have gender for every uh, film, but you have you can have several genders, and in this case, it can be like uh, in one column. Uh, separated by vertical line or by comma. Uh, and it's hard to analyze. If you want to, for example, calculate like a uh, number of uh, comedies to, 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 I don't know, to compare it to action films, uh, you cannot just use count. You, you can use like regular expressions to extract some values. Uh, but it's not the tidy way of doing that. The tidy way of doing that is actually, right, it's separating it to different either rows or columns. And uh, if you want to stay with your, with uh, working with uh, one row is one token, you can use separate, separate rows and then uh, return to one row, one token uh, uh, table format uh, using uh, pivot wider. And now you have many new columns, but that's okay. Actually, you can just extract the columns that you're interested in. Um, for example, we can, you know, we can do some analysis on, uh, I think we are out of time a bit, but actually you can just, uh, it can be, uh, you can try to do some linear regressions with dummy variables uh, on this uh, uh, data. For example, you can explore how, uh, for example, case influence on uh, length of word. It will be not really meaningful, I think, in this case, because there are too many uh, intermediate variables. Uh, but it can be interesting to, to try. Uh, or you can explore how person influence. Uh, uh, length of word. So for length of word, you can just, I think it, it can it, um, I, I, I think we don't have, uh, we don't have uh, length of uh, word here, but you can just subtract and and from and start and I mean, end minus start plus one is a length of 
word right yet. So, or you can just use actually a function ncar. It will be even more simple to calculate number of uh, characters in a word. So, like Google tokenized. Uh, mutate, uh, mutate, and car, uh, called token, token, and word link. Okay. I will just create a new column. This link of work. So I recommend you to try linear regression on this variable. Maybe you'll find something interesting because you can play with it. Uh, and I think that's all for today. We learned a lot today about how to work with text in R. And you can see that it's not a real problem. You have you, you can do everything that you want, and it's pretty easily. Uh, and of course, the most complicated things are about uh, data preparation. Uh, because playing the data, uh, reprocessing, it's usually the most complicated, the most difficult thing, I think, for every actually case of working with data, not just applying some complicated models, but just to prepare your data for, for that. Uh, uh, and that's why I showed you some, uh, how to apply this separate magic from uh, Tidier to uh, work with uh, the data that are not in tidy format, for example, if you have a variable that contains actually several variables and what to do with it. Actually, there is also one more way to do with it. Uh, it's actually creating list counts. So I can just shortly show you how it looks. So um, basically, I told you that uh, data frame is uh, something like a list of vectors, but that's not really true because actually uh, one column can be not a vector. It can be a list of the same length of as uh, the whole uh, data frame. Uh, it can be done even in base R, but in base R uh, you're really limited in working with it actually. For example, if you want to export a uh, data frame with list column, for example, it will get you, it will give you error because uh, many functions uh, in base R, they do not expect that you have list columns. Uh, although you have functionality for working with it. It's pretty strange, but it's quite, for base R, it's considered to be something like pretty exotic way to work with data. Uh, for the data version that data table, uh, you have a, a pretty established way to work with list counts. And uh, it's actually one more way to do, uh, to, do to, to work with uh, several values inside one column. Uh, stir split. We need stir split function, and uh, yes, we need to this fits and a split. We will use this separator vertical line, and and we rewrite fits this way. And now you can, you will see something pretty fun. 
that it's something like a vector inside the cell. So it's basically how, because it's this fits, if you uh, show the results in the console, uh, let's do it as table. If you see the result in the console, you can see that actually uh, this is a list. This fits is a list. And uh, every uh, value of this list is a vector, is character vector of some variable link. It can be three, it can be four, it could be zero, it can be five and so on. Uh, and uh, uh, this is called actually uh, nested data because uh, and you have some specific uh, function uh, functions for working with this kind of uh, list columns. Uh, you can find it by Googling nesting tidyverse. So for example, if you want to uh, widen or uh, so, so you want to expand this list how we did it with separated separate rows. You can use uh, unnest function uh, and we'll, we'll do more or less the same that we did uh, with separate rows. So it's just one more way. Uh, this way is, is hard way because uh, <laughs> working with a uh, list inside data frame uh, requires you another layer of abstraction. So it's pretty complicated, uh, but uh, it can be useful for some cases, uh, especially like this, for example, uh, you don't want to create many new columns. You don't want to uh, uh, you don't want to spoil your structure of data frame. You want to have one uh, line one row uh, is one token uh, and you don't want to have additional columns but you don't want to uh, save your uh, data in this format that is that you can only process by text processing uh, without this diverse things in this case uh, using this uh, nesting and list columns it can be a good way so yeah, that's all. <laughs> Sorry, it was a bit longer than I expected. Uh, maybe you have any questions? You can ask me now or later. I am... I need to... Okay, okay. Uh, I think you misrote it. Mm, yep, I think... Uh, I think you can, I think it's all and you can just uh, just uh, go and enjoy your weekends. Uh, but I know if uh, Sebastianos, uh, I, I know, what do you think? Uh, would it be interesting to others because you can share your screen and it can be helpful for others too if you share uh, what's inside your project and what uh, what are the problems that you have. Uh, I think it can be uh, interesting for others too. Maybe, it depends. You can just yeah, well, actually, drop off for uh, now. My question is just a quick question because uh, it's mm -hmm. a matter of source of the files because uh, I'm trying to, uh, to upload some TXT on R uh, and even if the file is saved in the same folder, mm -hmm. once I have to uh, okay, it. just uh, just okay. share the screen. Let's, let's see. Ah, can you share the screen? Uh, I think you can. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, you can. So let, let's let, let's start and let's. Can you, can you see? Can you your hear? file doesn't exist in the current working directory. Yeah. Uh, yes. Even if the file is saved in the. Same folder here where I have all the TXT files. Yeah, I yeah, create. but uh, it uh, mm, 
I think that the problem is that uh, working directory is different. I don't know why. I think that. Uh, yeah, me neither. Because uh, a few, few days ago, uh, without doing anything, the file was able to be. Uh, written, yeah, because I think you somewhere you manually changed uh, working directory. Uh, and uh, what you need is you need to return your working directory back. So I really don't mm -hmm. recommend to, to, to do it manually because it's better to work in projects and so, but for some reason it appeared that it changed and uh, let's do it like set WD. Uh, what do I have to, where do I have to go? Uh, just uh, you can write in the command line in console, sorry, uh, set uh, WD. Set, set WD. Right, WD, right, yes. Uh, 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 WD, D, D, uh, D. D. Yeah, like that. set working directory. Uh, and as a um, argument for this function, you need to uh, to supply a, a way a path to uh, to uh, the directory that you want to use. So just so do uh, I have to write the process here? Uh, you need to uh, you need to open in browser. I mean, in like uh, you know folders. The thing uh, you need to yeah, please open again. This one, for example. Uh, I I can see. I I see only R Studio now. Mm. Uh, okay, because for example, here I copy. For example, like that. Uh, yeah, but uh, what you need to do, you need to, to use it as a character vector. So you need to put um, quotation marks. Yeah. Okay. And let's try. Uh, and also you need, I think, let's try like that. I think it can work. Uh, okay. Uh, the next thing, um, try to everywhere you have uh, this uh, slash, try to double the slash. So run the same line, but everywhere you have the slash, double the slash. So you have like two slashes instead of one. Yeah, yeah, like that. Is anyone here? Oh. Uh, and also uh, after Seba be, before oh, the community. Document, yes. Okay, let's try. Oh, okay. It seems that works. And now let's try. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, directory. Final work. Uh, <laughs> does it appear at final work or it, it appears in, in other? Work directory. There is a ah yeah. Oh. So it's important to understand that uh, working directory is not uh, mm, always the directory where your script is. So by default, uh, your working directory is yeah, it's where you created the script. Uh, but for example, if you move the script, uh, it can change. Okay. Or, yeah. So yeah. Yeah, that's okay. all. Okay. Okay. Good, good luck with the project. So, yes. uh, I, yep. I have just one last <laughs> very quick okay, question. Okay. Okay. Uh, for example, last time, uh, no, wait. Mm, that, uh, where is because it a few minutes ago uh, and was working. No, where is it? Not working. No, actually, it was working one. Mm -hmm. second ago. Uh, um, I think you I check that you downloaded it because reload the model again, trying no, to reload. It was open. It was working before the call, right before doing this uh, thing. Uh, 
Okay. Yeah, but I, I think. Can I install again the? Yeah, uh, I think you can just uh, restart or something like that to start our session and uh, yeah. Uh, so I close uh, the 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 project and reopen it. Yeah, and then you need to even yeah. Okay, the, tr try to do these things because it says that something like you uh, uh, you closed and open again and something is not uh, uh, usually uh, better use UTF eight. Uh, 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 yeah. Okay. So try to just I... close, open things, and so on, and uh, uh, and just run all importing, like and uh, like importing models, and so on. Yes, because so... the problem was that uh, you, you know that there is uh, the, the table uh, we were looking at uh, before, the the big one mm -hmm. one we created. Because I, I think I remember we, we encountered this the same problem before. Uh, it was like just. The question of okay. important I, I just, model. Yeah, Try to find by, by yourself what is the reason uh, for this. Yeah, the, the, no, the, the problem was that uh, um, everything was working, but in the table they were not. Uh, there was a verb, but verbs uh, and everything like that, but not uh, uh, um, preposition. I don't know why. So all the preposition were considered as a foreign word, but actually <laughs> they they are Italian. Word, but preposition, and I don't know why, but uh, this function, the function, uh, this one, mm -hmm. when creating the ta the table, was not mm -hmm. considering uh, this kind of words. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? Yeah, no, no um, I try to show you. Uh, I still install. Uh -huh. Try to use yeah. not object Italian, but object uh, Ital one, for example, because yeah, but I didn't change uh, anything. But no, uh, Ital one without uh, uh, quotation marks as a variable, as a no, as a model that you uh, actually. Uh, I try to use UG pipe download model again. Uh, this little one, uh, UG pipe download model, language Italian, all the things. Or well, it doesn't matter because they're the same, so you can just use GL. So you, I mean, you don't understand what I mean. Like you just yeah, uh, re download the model to GL. Uh, okay. variable and then you use this DL uh, object. No, no, not object Italian, but ob object DL. Object? Object DL, DL. That you created, I mean, you, you, you created in the sixth line, uh, object DL using QD pipe download model. And now in 15, line number 15, you use this downloaded model GL, I mean, line six. Line six. Okay. You create oh, sorry, GL. Sorry, sorry. Yes. Yeah. And try to use this GL without uh, quotation marks. Okay. It's important that you, you, you read the uh, error because, for yes, example. Actually, I don't know why there, there is this error because uh, uh, right before I shared my screen, right before we changed the directory, the folder was working in this way. Yet, yeah, it's important to explore where it's uh, where this problem comes from because try to install it again, like the code DL UG pipe. So the problem is that model is doesn't work. And uh, it's important to understand why it doesn't work. The file at load the model again from the file to the command. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, 
uh, check, for example, that you have uh, this file. The, um, which one? The uh, that you have on the error, just, I mean, this I mean, try to like, yeah. Do you have the specific? Yes, I do have. Let's see, dot ud pipe. Okay, uh, try to run this line six again. And let's have a look what do you have if you run this line. Uh, print mm -hmm. term. And let's explore where this uh, model is saved. No, I'm finished. Model stored at, yes. uh, yeah. Which is the same uh, as before. It's important to check that it's the same actually, because it can be. Work uh, mm -hmm. Work prod. yeah, you see it's the same here. Yes, and now, now try to, Here it's working. Yeah, and now let's try again and see on GL, on GL, on GL, no, not Italian. Uh, because when you said object Italian, it tries to read on loud it again. Now we'll try to use. Okay, this looks like you restarted your R session, which has invalidated the model object, trying to now to reload the model again from the file at um okay download model i uh, saw so i think there is also uh not only download model but also import model try to using to use these things to because in uh, writing what i know import i mean just try to google it <laughs> i mean uh, i can google it for you but uh, i mean it's uh, your no, job <laughs> i'm not explaining why is that is why was working right before the call <laughs> like yeah uh, but yeah but it explains you in the error message because you restarted our session and uh, it invalidated the model object so you restart our session you switch between projects and uh, that invalidated the model. Mm -hmm. And it says, try to reload the model again from the file. Uh, maybe something is broken, there is no file, but we have this file and we actually even re-downloaded it. Yeah. And so that it says that it should be uh, imported. Mm -hmm. uh, somehow let's uh, try to import it somehow but i don't know why it doesn't work here but you know let's try to figure out try to find try to check some functions in uh ud pipe package for example mm, ud pipe Try to use, for example, UDPipe load model, maybe. And for this function, uh, you, yeah, try to, so it can be used in UDPipe annotate. Pipe annotate. So try to use the pipe load model. Uh, mm -hmm. And provide the text. No, no. Uh, just read the help for the function. 
just what, what it needs to, 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 to have. So I'm sorry, I need to go, but I mean, you, you, you need to specify to solve this error by yourself. And yeah, it can be, it, it can be difficult, but I mean, yeah. yeah. You, you need to read help and check uh, parameters, what it does, what it takes and so on. So uh, okay. you use question mark, UDPI, upload model, explore, because, well, it's not something that uh, I mean, that, that I know and I can uh, like explain to you. Mm -hmm. It's something that uh, you have a package and you, Mm, uh, I mean, um, and you just uh, like need to learn how to deal with these uh, problems uh, by yourself because uh, y y y uh, I don't know package much better than you. I just, I mean, it's not something that you actually learn usually because from, for packages like this, it's usually like uh, you, you Google it, you found it in internet, mm. something cannot, something may uh, do not work and you try to build by yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, and the better you know R, the better you can deal with it. And actually, mm. but actually the main uh, uh, skill there is just uh, uh, knowing how to read uh, help and uh, Googling. Just, mm. I know, I have this error and so on and just try to google i can i mean i can if you ask me to, how to solve this problem i will google <laughs> mm -hmm. i can google it for you but it will be not yeah. efficient uh, because yeah. it's easier to you for you to copy paste all that and to try okay. to deal with it so it's something that you need to deal by your own i can try to help you with some specific things but uh, in general uh I, I don't know this package better than you. And if I have such uh, errors, I just Google them. So. Okay, so I will. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. And, uh, good luck with it. Thank you for your time. Uh, you're welcome. Bye. Yeah.